What's going on guys? My name is Alex. I'm an intern at The Signal and uh, this week we're going to be going over a few things sports related. We're going to be going over, you know, the state of Houston area sports, baseball, basketball, football, hockey even though we don't have hockey. Uh, we're going to be going over the NHL, how they finished their season inside of a bubble along, as, along with the NBA. Um, the M MLB and the NFL decided to go a different way. Football and baseball said, we don't want a bubble. Um, and they've made it fairly far um, so far. And kind of baseball's still going on. Football's going on. And they don't seem to have too many issues. They did have some flare-ups um, at the beginning of the season and ongoing. But as baseball is in the postseason, we haven't really seen any COVID outbreaks from them. They're still playing. They're, I mean, no players have reported during the postseason so far. Um, so even though they are not in a bubble, they are making things work with the condensed season they are having. I know the NFL, the NFL is having um, games still going on. They're having outbreaks, it seems like, every week. I wouldn't necessarily say outbreaks, but they are having players test positive. Some are false positives. Others aren't false positives. So we're going to dive into that. The NBA finished their season while they were in the bubble. They couldn't, They had all the play-in games. Players were confined into the area in Orlando. And they basically finished out their season like that. They had to come together and have a common goal, which was to finish their season, have the playoffs, have the championship, and go from there. And they succeeded. They didn't have any any really any issues they had a few players that kind of messed things up but it wasn't catastrophic for the league and they finished their season NHL also had a bubble they had two bubble sites and they went off of that so we're gonna be talking about that so let's start with the NHL which you know they finished their season and even though they did finish their season uh, it's safe to say that the NHL players w would rather not do that again. They they said at times they felt like animals. There was a fence providing a barrier in between like NHL workers and players inside the bubble from outside people just passing by. They weren't allowed in the facilities at all, and they were in two different two different bubble cities, I believe in Canada, but. You know, they, yeah, it was Toronto and Edmonton where they were. So they were in Canada in a bubble to where no one could get in or out. They were constantly monitored. They were wearing masks while they were inside the facilities. Um, obviously not while playing, but they were wearing those masks anytime they were going from room to room or just wandering around watching games, watching other teams. And I know it was uh, very stressful on them. You know, one player said, for all the guys questioning how safe it would be, that quickly went away. It was one of the safest places you could be. They were constantly checking on your credentials, constantly checking their clear app, which is a health monitoring app, and there was security everywhere. There was mask police everywhere, making sure everyone was doing their part, doing what they were supposed to be doing. So... Everything went smoothly with the bubble. Like I said, some players said they did feel like animals since there was a fence outside of the buildings, the bubbles they were at, keeping the general public out so that there were no outbreaks from, you know, someone sneaking in and, and infecting the players with the COVID. But they finished their season. You know, everything seemed to go fairly, fairly s smoothly. But it was proved that it can be done. Uh, they were the first ones to finish. The second ones to finish were the NBA players. The Los Angeles Lakers ended up winning the championship. They did play in the bubble in Orlando. I know some players, oh, I guess most players, were extremely happy when it was all over. Um, staying in one confined area like that for an extended period of time is it could be extremely stressful. You don't get to see your family, really. You don't get to see friends. You don't get to go out and do things. Uh, but, I mean, that's been the story from this whole pandemic is they've 
they were required to isolate themselves if they wanted to finish their season and get everything done that they wanted to get done, and they did that. Towards the end, they did allow media members to come in. They were tested and had to stay in the bubble, so they came through a quarantine period where they would have to stay in different rooms. They were just locked in to their their rooms, and um, once they came out of the quarantine, they were free to be to be admitted into the bubble. Um, same thing with fa- there was a limited number of uh, friends and family that could come in for each player, so they did get to see some of their family. But I mean, it they were in Orlando. It was nice weather. They got to run around. Uh, the whole Orlando park that Disney had there is Disney ESPN. And so they got to go fishing. They got to play on boats. Um, they got to go swim at the pool. Uh, all in within a confined area. So it wasn't just like they were sitting in a hotel room waiting for their next game or practice. You know, they did get they did get to have a fun time. But if you're stuck in there for three months, I mean, it's, you're going to run out of things to do, obviously. I know a lot of players played video games. They had a barbershop in there. A lot of players changed their hairstyles just because it was something to do. But, I mean, a lot of people, I know Danny Green from the Lakers, He uh, as soon as they, they won, he was basically screaming, free, we're free. They can finally go out and do things. They can go see their friends and family. Now there's no really no limit to what they can do other than what the guidelines from their cities are saying. LeBron James... He said, it's probably been one of the most challenging things I've ever done as far as while I was a professional. As far as committing to something and actually making it through. I knew when I was coming what we were coming here for. I would be lying if I sat up here and knew everything inside the bubble. The toll that it would take on your mind and body and everything else. Because it's been extremely tough. So, I mean, even some of the best players in in the league are complaining about you know, we did have a very strenuous time here. You know, it was it wasn't the worst, you know, it wasn't terrible, but you you'd much rather have your freedom. Um I mean, I think everyone can understand that. Even us as people, we were you know, parks were open and things like that were open to where we could go travel, but we still felt like we were confined just cuz we weren't able to go everywhere we wanted to go when we wanted to go. So being stuck in one facility for three to four months, I imagine it's just, it's probably just mind numbing. And, uh, you know, you get, get pretty exhausted from that. The MLB, MLB decided not to go with the bubble formats. They allowed teams and players to travel. They, uh, they took different precautions, you know, trying to make sure everything was as safe as possible while... The players were traveling. The players were home. They really relied on them whenever it came to police yourselves. You know, um, you can go home after practice, after games, but don't do anything dumb. You know, don't do anything that would jeopardize your team, the rest of the league. Don't go out to clubs. Don't go out partying, you know, things like that. Just do do things that are smart for you and your profession. Earlier, early on in the season, uh, they had they did decide to go with condensed season since their season was supposed to start and the pandemic kind of messed that all up. But early in the season, the Miami Marlins had an outbreak of an alleged incident where some players were doing some things they necessarily shouldn't have been, and they basically infected almost the entire team, and that caused their team to shut down. It caused the teams they were playing to shut down. That kind of messed up their whole schedule. But the baseball season, you'll get so far there. They are about to go to the World Series, you know. There's only, I believe, one more game left between the Dodgers and Braves. They've made it through almost all of their season. They haven't been having any major outbreaks recently. Once they got into the playoffs, they really hunkered down. Players are doing what they're supposed to be. You can obviously see which teams cared about it a little more. And, um... You know, they were a little more serious about policing themselves, policing their players, making sure everyone was doing what they were supposed to do. Also, the MLB and the this final series has in the NLCS, 
the National League Championship Series has started allowing crowds and you know spectators into the stadium to watch games live as opposed to having to watch it at their home. They are really doing things to where you know they can they can come in. I believe it's about ten thousand people can come into those those games and watch baseball. You know, like like you usually do. Of course, they have to distance. They have to wear their masks the entire time. But, I mean, it's a big step forward. I know baseball's missing that revenue from ticket sales. So they would really like to be able to go back to normal. It's definitely going to bring in more money. It's going to be a better feel for fans. They're going to be able to, you know, come watch their favorite teams. I mean, albeit now that they're in the NLCS and the World Series tickets are going to be at a premium. And since there's only 10,000 of them, it's going to be even more. But they are moving forward. They aren't having a bubble and locking people down. So that's going pretty well. As far as the NFL, the NFL is going with, they're allowing some states where it was allowing players or fans from the very beginning. Others have slowly let it in. It really just depended on the states and their guidelines, their cities. Um, however, however that was happening, I know we're in week six now of the NFL season. Texans have began allowing fans into their stadium to watch live uh, Tennessee Titans so the Steelers and Pittsburgh uh, Philadelphia Eagles and New York they still aren't allowing any fans but Minnesota's allowing fans Jacksonville is allowing 25 percent of their fans Indianapolis is allowing 12,500 fans Panthers will continue to allow limited fans Miami is about to go up to 13,000 um, I know Miami has been kind of Florida in general has been kind of the people that are saying we're going to go forward you know you don't have to have masks anymore you don't have to social distance anymore we're kind of unleashing everybody and I mean they're kind of trying to see how that'll go I mean I know Miami has a, has had a spike in numbers but they're just letting everyone do their things the Patriots up in New England they're not allowing anybody any fans um the Buccaneers are allowing 25%, which they're in Tampa Bay, so it's interesting that they're going, um, even though they're in Florida, they're still limiting the capacity. The 49ers, who are down in California, they're not allowing any spectators. Bills, when the Buffalo, that New York area, is still not allowing anybody. And the Cowboys up in Dallas are allowing 25,000 fans to attend games. So throughout the, you know, the season, they are expanding the number of fans that are allowed to come in while you know working their best so slowly but surely everyone is getting back to normal it seems like it's a good thing you know everyone's tired of you know staying inside and not being able to do whatever they'd like opening up slowly is a is a chance for people to get a little bit back to normal you know it's not it's not completely normal it is slowly moving in that direction as far as the Texans, the Texans, you know, did in sep the uh, end of September, they allowed um, about 20% of their fans to come in, uh, moving a little more Houston-based. Texans allowed about 13,300 13, fans, or approximately 20% capacity, to uh, visit in an NRG arena. Nothing seems to have come from that. No one, there hadn't been a huge spike in cases or anything like that Pl players seem to enjoy fans a little bit having fans there more obviously I mean they love playing in front of fans it kind of gives them a little extra juice so it's it's been good they're slowly allowing more play fans the Astros um, the Astros didn't get to see fans all year you know they kind of did their best and the M MLB was didn't let anyone have fans um, up until now so you know, we kind of missed out on their whole season. The Rockets, the Rockets didn't have fans at all, of course, since they were in the bubble. Um, but, I mean, Houston teams, the Texans are really the only ones that have been able to get fans like they wanted. Um, I mean, obviously they want a full stadium, but they're settling for the little amount that they can get. So, I mean, the Rockets, the Rockets, they, they did their best, you know, obviously wishing they could play in front of a home crowd 
Uh, it gives it does give them an advantage whenever they're playing at the Toyota Center. The Astros, you know, the Astros love playing at Minute Maid. Uh, they they get that extra extra boost from the fans constantly cheering, yelling, distracting other team. But you know, things during this whole pandemic haven't been normal. So I mean, why would it start now? But uh, you know, we're just hoping that this all ends. Life can go back to normal. We can start living our lives normal again. And uh, I feel like ever since sports started again, we've gotten a little bit of normalcy back, um, piece by piece. Uh, I know everyone's rejoiced that sports have come back. It's a major thing in this country. And everyone was awaiting the return of sports, especially in Houston. Houston is a sports fanatic city. So, I mean, even though none of our teams have made it to the championship this year so far, you know, we still support our teams here. We love going and watching the teams, and we're hoping that sooner rather than later we can get back into those stadiums and cheer for our teams so that we can, you know, like I said, get back to normalcy. We want we want to be able to go out. We want to be able to, you know, high-five other fans in the stands uh, we want to be able to do things like that and really just, you know, have no limits. But because of this whole pandemic, we're, you know, we are limited in what we can do. And uh, everyone has to do their part so that we can get rid of this thing as, as soon as possible. You know, wear your masks, do your your sanitation, things like that. And we will, you know, make it to the other side and be able to live normal lives again, go out, see people, and go from there. But uh, that's all I have for this week, guys. Thanks for listening. Hopefully I'll be back with more episodes covering a myriad of different topics and subjects. I'm Alex Moore, reporter for The Signal, and I'll talk to you all again soon.